Nitrogen is the key driver for reaching yield potential and maximising water use efficiency. While product choice and application timing are important, rate of nitrogen application is king. Therefore, retaining as much nitrogen in a cropping system by reducing losses is critical. So it's worthwhile taking a look at the nitrogen cycle to gain some understanding of these loss pathways. Urea is the cheapest and most commonly used form of nitrogen, which rapidly converts to ammonium and then nitrifies more slowly into nitrate nitrogen. While nitrate nitrogen is readily taken up by plants, losses can occur through leaching and denitrification under some environmental conditions. However, I want to focus on the losses through volatilization. Firstly, what happens to urea when it lands on the soil surface? It rapidly dissolves in the presence of soil or atmospheric moisture and converts to ammonium. This is the stage where volatilization problems occur. Urea may only be present on the soil surface for 24 to 48 hours as the conversion to ammonium is rapid. This conversion is driven by a naturally occurring enzyme called urease. Urea acted on by urease converts to ammonium carbonate, which is unstable and can be lost as ammonia, as ammonia gas. These losses are increased because of the pH influence from the urea granule on the soil surface. Urea has a pH of about 9.5, and as you can see from this demonstration using a basic home gardener pH kit, there is localised alkalinity several centimetres in diameter where the urea granule has dissolved. With, your, with pH greater than 8, ammonia gas tends to be produced rather than stable ammonium. So while alkaline soils have a greater risk of ammonia production compared to acid soils, this localised urea soil surface influence renders most soils prone to volatilisation losses. Another factor for larger volatilisation losses is soil type. Lighter soils have fewer cation exchange sites and therefore can't absorb as much ammonium. What can't be absorbed is prone to loss. Moist soils that are drying, light showery rain events, dews, all lead to ammonia vaporising as the soil surface dries. Windy conditions also drive the ammonia gas from the soil, particularly where there is little vegetative cover. Soils with large amounts of organic matter also host larger numbers of urease enzymes, driving greater losses. Your only friend in top dressing urea is rain, and in significant amounts. Typically 10 mils would be considered adequate to move urea deep enough into the soil so the ammonium has enough exchange sites to successfully absorb to. Alkaline soils, localised alkalinity from the urea granules, dews or showery rain, wind, higher organic carbon soils, lighter soils, open canopies, all increase the risk profile of volatilisation. These losses have been reported to be as high as 23%. Losses can be protected by 80% using green urea. The active in green urea blocks the activity of urease enzymes, slowing the conversion of urea to ammonium carbonate, allowing more time for the ammonium to absorb to the exchange sites and the localised pH influence to buffer back to the soil pH. Losses can start occurring within a day of top dress and continue for a week in the absence of rain. Volatilisation losses are occurring in most top dress applications. Just because we can't see ammonia gas loss, we shouldn't ignore it. Green Urea offers a solution.